Okay, another chest x-ray and let's see what this x-ray has to offer for us to learn. Number one, left lung is decreased in volume and there is a compensatory hyperinflation of right lung. There is an area of increased opacity over left lung covering roughly half the size of lung itself. However, the lung tissue in apical area as well as a portion of left lower lobe near left claustrophenic angle is well aerated, means full of air. The opacity does not have any sharp margins and there is no air bronchogram. The trachea is shifted towards the left hand side, most probably because of shrinking volume of left lung. Aortopulmonary window is not visible. Left cardiac border is not visible at all, indicating whatever this pathology is, it is in left upper lobe. As left upper lobe lies anteriorly, and in healthy subjects, air in the left upper lobe creates a clear contrast with the opaque shadow of left heart demarcating left heart border. Please note what is called tenting of diaphragm. I hope you can see a tent shape here in this hemidiaphragm. This typically happens when lung tissue is shrinking in volume as in lung fibrosis. Decreased lung volume, uh, area of increased opacity without sharp margins and loss of delineation of left heart border all point towards the diagnosis of left upper lobe collapse. This is a very classical and straightforward example of left upper lobe collapse. So let's come back to the topic which is Luftischel sign. Now my pronunciation of this word might not be right. This is a German word and I always find it difficult to pronounce. Anyway, the spelling is in front of you. Luftischel sign is frequently seen in cases of left upper lobe collapse as it is here. You can see a crescent shape lucency adjacent to arch of aorta. And by definition, a Luftischel sign is a paramediastinal crescent shape lucency which is created due to sandwiching of medial portion of air-filled apical segment of left lower lobe between the arch of aorta and collapsed left upper lobe. So there is a segment of left lower lobe sandwiched between collapsed left upper lobe and arch of aorta. Apex of left lung is formed by apical segment of upper lobe while the topmost portion of apex of left lower lobe should lie somewhere here at the level of fourth thoracic vertebra so this is second rib third rib fourth rib so roughly the apex of left lower lobe apical segment of left lower lobe starts from here where the oblique fissure starts Apical segment of left lower lobe lies posteriorly, medially and laterally and as upper lobe collapses, apical segment of left lower lobe is pulled superiorly on the medial side and is visible as a crescent shaped lucency between arch of aorta and collapsed left upper lobe. Now you would argue if left upper lobe is collapsed, why the apex of left lung appears lucent. This very commonly is a result of hyperinflation of left lower lobe instead of air in left upper lobe. As you can imagine as in this case half of the left lung is functionless but the oxygen requirements remain same for the body. So very frequently left lobe gets hyperinflated just as right lung is hyperinflated in this case i'm thinking there may be a pathology here but this is a jpeg image rather than a dicom image and probably has been digitized from analog film so it is really really difficult to comment there is uh, a good example of this sign on www.redrounds.com and i'll show it to you in a minute 
So here we are on www.redrounds.com and you can clearly see a very uh, classic picture of luftitial sign, a crescent shaped lucency between arch of aorta and collapsed upper lobe. There is a CD scan image of the same patient. This is collapsing left upper lobe, left lower lobe and you can see portion of left lower lobe is sandwiched between arch of aorta and the collapsed lobe. You can see bronchi filled with fluid rather than air. I hope you can see it. It's, it's a very small picture. This is oblique fissure. Thank you very much.